Happy Monday, sneaker fans. It is a particularly happy Monday if you are a Ronnie O'Sullivan fan. With an 11-9 win yesterday in the final, he has lifted his fourth Shanghai Masters title in a row. I suppose in hindsight, it seems inevitable that he won it. Um, in my preview, I went for Judd Trump, um, who, who I probably put the curses on, which I normally do when I predict a player to win a title. They normally fall away pretty early. Um, but look, this is a tournament that O'Sullivan's dominated now. It's his fourth title in a row, like I say. It's his fifth title in Shanghai Masters overall. Some more statistics for you. It's his 76th title of his illustrious career. Uh, this is his 23rd win in an invitational tournament. It's his first win at all since last autumn's Champion of Champions. And he's done this all in his very first tournament that he's played this season. Incredible, really. Um, there's nothing more to be said about this man that's not already been said. Just a relentless winner. Particularly, as I said in my preview of these tournaments, small, sharp, invitational events are his home at the moment. He'll be defending his Champion of Champions soon. He'll probably do pretty well there. Um, and we know what he's like at the Masters as well. Um, but in all truth, uh, last week, he wasn't really anywhere near his best. Um, but that just makes it more impressive for me. Um, as amazing as it is to watch the top players in full flow, I think it's an even better achievement for these guys when they win not at their best. And, you know, Ronnie's probably a player that will always say he would rather lose playing well than win um, playing okay. But that's just a, a sort of perfectionist in him. Um but ultimately, he has this ability to win with his B guilt or C games, uh, which is something only a few other players really have. You know, you look at Selby, you look at Higgins. Um, Judd Trump's developed that ability as well. Um, but he's just so hard to beat. You have to scrap him off the table. If he is mentally there, he's so hard to beat. You know, it's it gets said a lot, but sometimes to... The biggest um, obstacle O'Sullivan has in matches is himself. But when he's on it and he's focused and he's able to put disappointment of playing poorly to one side, he's so difficult to beat. You've got to take your chances. Um, and to be fair, throughout the tournament, players did have their chances. Um, John Higgins, and I might circle back to Higgins later in the video, um, but he was 5-2 up against Ronnie playing far better snooker and he sort of just capitulated you know he could have won 6-2 he could have won 6-3 and then when it got to 5-4 O'Sullivan found a gear just to reel off two centuries in a row to win um sort of similar to with Mark Selby um I wouldn't call Mark Selby's a collapse um but once Selby got an early lead he was sort of just nursing that through um, and at 7-6, he was one point away from going 8-6 up, missed frame ball. O'Sullivan's made an unbelievable clearance. Um, and again, he found himself, So he found an extra gear just when he needed to. And that's just incredibly impressive and a sign of, you know, not that we need it, but of just how good O'Sullivan is. If he can hang on and hang on and hang on in a match and keep himself within two or three frames of his opponent, even when he's playing poorly, he's got that ability just to find a switch from nowhere. Um, and once he finds it, it's very difficult to stop him. Um, in the final, there were points where it looked like he might win fairly comfortably. Um, you know, that does frame where I, th I think it was to win 11-8, um, which went down to the black, and he missed a couple of goes at the, the pink. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we can talk about him not being at his best all we want. The fact is he's walked away with the trophy, which apparently he's given away. Um, <laughs> but that's just Ronnie for you. Uh, an unbelievable week. Um, his fans, I'm sure would have loved it. I'm sure you guys loved it. Um, <clears throat> word on Luca Brussel, um, his first final since winning the world championships last May. And okay. He didn't get over the line yesterday. But this is still a very good week for him. Uh, you know, he beat Williams again. He beat Robertson. 
And th- there's a different side to Brazil now. Um, I think, to be honest, there was a different side to Brazil before he won the World Championship. Um, last season, he had found a bit of consistency, found something at Sheffield to win when no one was expecting him to. Um, and you look at world champions, sort of first-time world champions, sometimes that title of being world champion can hinder players. It doesn't look like it's hindering him at all. Um, instead, it looks like it's propelled him to the next level. And that level is to be on the same wavelength as O'Sullivan, as Selby, as Trump, as Robertson, as just serial winners in the game. Um, and when I was watching him, I, I kept making notes. And, and one note that I kept making was comparisons to Mark Williams I'm not saying they're comparable in the way they play the game you know Williams just floats the balls in dead weight whilst Russell hits them at 100 mile an hour they were completely different in that respect but Russell was just floating around the table he was making the game look just effortlessly easy Um, he looks now just so calm so measured and just so in control of himself you know, when he's in that position where he's around the pink and black spot, he's now another player that you just watch and you think, this is nailed on. He he can't really miss from here. He does occasionally. <laughs> I, I say that I'll contradict myself a little bit. He's still got the odd careless moment in him, which if he does want to be like a serial, serial winner, he is going to have to cut those out. But I think the misses are just part and parcel of the way he plays. Um... And I think he's probably okay with it. I think he's okay in himself that he'll say, I'm happy to miss the odd ball here and there because I'm going to get 99% of the rest of the shots I play playing in this way. Um, and it's going to win in matches. It's going to win in more tournaments. But yeah, he, he's a joy to watch now. Um, you know, Sullivan clearly rates him highly. Everyone does in the game. And he's just reached that level. Uh, reached a level that perhaps not many would have thought that he was actually capable of getting to. Um, but yeah, he's he's such a good player. Such a good player. I, th- there were times against Robertson and, and against O'Sullivan when he was just nonchalantly walking around the table, measures up the potting angle, gets down, doesn't even wiggle the cue. He just gets down, plays a shot, gets up, walks around, gets down, plays the next shot. Um, he Yeah, he's amazing to watch him full flow. Um, and it'll just be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how long he can sort of ride this wave of form four. Um, can he take it through the whole way of the season? Is there going to be a bit of a dip? And if there is a dip, how can he react to that dip? Um, but he's playing with a smile on his face. I'm sure deep down he was gutted to lose the final, but in fairness to him, it's probably he's probably landed back in England and he's forgotten about it and he's ready for the next match. He looks completely in control of himself. Um, and yeah, it's definitely exciting to see what he's got going forwards. Now, finally, as I mentioned earlier, there was just one other player um, that I wanted to focus on um, before finishing this video. And that's John Higgins. Um, I didn't get to watch much of the snooker sort of live uh, because of work and the timings of tournaments in China. Uh, but one of the matches that I did get to watch uh, during the week was O'Sullivan against Higgins. And... There's a familiar story with John Higgins and it's a question that's going to be raised more now in relation to this result. And that's, is he suffering a little bit with Clinch's disease? And that's such a bizarre question to aim at one of the most successful players that's ever played the game. Um, And whether I firmly believe that question or not, um, I'm not too sure on yet. But recent evidence isn't looking great for him. Um, In this match... As I referred to earlier, he was well in control. He was by far the better player. He was 5-2 up and deservedly so. And I know O'Sullivan played amazingly well in the last two frames to win it. You know, he didn't give Higgins any form of chance. Um, but Higgins could have won 6-2 and he could have won 6-3 fairly easily. But his level just dropped. And I'm not too sure if it's the winning line knowing that the winning line is there, that he's suffering from getting over it. 
you know, he had a couple of seasons ago uh, where he just kept losing finals from winning positions. Um, most of the time, I think he was... Um, you're going to forgive me if I'm wrong. I think it may have been in the English Open um, and then the Scottish Open, potentially. He was 8-6 up in two finals against O'Sullivan and Allen and then lost 9-8. And then the tournament before the World Championship, he was 9-4 up against Robertson in the Tour Championships final and managed to lose that as well. Um, and then, you know, even the season, you know, we, we can talk about this match, but you go back a few weeks ago at the European Masters, he was 3-0 up against Judd Trump. I think he was 4-2 up as well in that match and he ended up losing in a decider. Um, so it's just those few results that add a little bit of tinge of doubt into your mind about Higgins when he's playing the very best players. And I think Higgins is in form. You, you know, his his record recently speaks for itself. He's getting to finals. He's getting pretty deep into tournaments pretty regularly. It's just when he's playing the big players and he's got that chance to put them to bed, he's not quite taking it. Um, when, you know, John Higgins of old... And when I say old, I, I mean what, four or five years ago, even probably less than that he would put them to bed no problem. He doesn't mind getting over the winning line. He embraces it because he's a top player. Um, and I'm sure he will. Um, I think if he keeps getting himself into these positions, at some point he'll get that breakthrough. Um, I don't think he's won a tournament since March 2021. Um, and I think in that tournament was the Players' Championship when he only lost about four frames in the entire tournament. Um, but two and a half years is a long time for, for these top guys. Uh, you know, the amount of tournaments they play in every year, they sort of expect to win something regularly, sort of once or twice a season. So for Higgins, it might be a slight concern that he hasn't picked anything up yet. I don't think the concern should be too high. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to raise it because it is something, it's a pattern that keeps coming up. And I'd be interested to see the next time he plays, you know, a top eight player, top ten player, if he's got a position to put them to bed, Will he be able to take it? But yeah, ultimately that brings uh, my review of last week's tournament in Shanghai to an end. Really promising um, to have Snooker back in China. Like I said in my preview, it is absolutely huge that Snooker continues to have regular tournaments over there from this point forwards. No one could have foreseen COVID, but now that we're past that, it's so important that Snooker stays there with three, four, five tournaments every year. Um... And yeah, it, it was a really good tournament. You know, O Solomon aside, I think pretty much all the top players looking good, Nick. Judd Trump, I know he lost pretty heavily to Selby, but he looks good still. Selby looks very good. Luca Brussel, as we've mentioned. Neil Robertson, he looks um, potentially not back to his best, uh, but he got a couple of very important wins for him going forwards. Um, and yeah, this, the tour takes a... A break for one week when they go to qualifying this week um, but this is really the only break that we've got for the next sort of six or seven weeks um, we're back in the UK next week for the British Open um, and I'll be there to review it when it's over but until then guys stay safe